with A1 Telephone Service and Repair, A1 Electronics. You can reach us on the web at www.a1-telephone.com and you can also reach us at 618-235-6959. Today I want to show you a really cool piece of equipment. It's an Art Deco style Shivers Multiphone and this is Greg's uh, Multiphone from New York and you're not going to see a whole lot of these. These are pretty rare. Uh, there's not a whole lot of information floating around out there about these so we kind of had to back design it, back engineer it to figure out how they were using these. They basically, uh, Shivers is the guy who invented the pinball machine and uh, he, this was his answer to a jukebox. You know jukeboxes were big and heavy and they would only play about 20 or 30 records. That's all they would hold in them. And uh, so basically this was his answer to a jukebox. These would go almost anywhere. And although I have this one apart, I'm, I'm going to uh, do some more videos of this. This isn't the last time you'll see this uh, Shivers Multiphone. This is a nickel. Uh, they made a nickel one and a dime one and this is the nickel one. And basically his ideal was to play uh, use the telephone lines to play music over and uh, he has about 300 song selections here so you know that beats a jukebox because you could simply uh, put your money in and what would happen is you would talk right into the microphone here because it says talk right here talk here and uh, you would tell the operator not at the CO or telephone company but the operator of the company where this was located at and they had a bunch of uh, amplified phonographs and they had a counter so when you would put money into this machine they know they knew how much uh, it would count it uh, and what they would do is ask you how many songs you wanted to play and what they were and uh, she could you know they the operator would know how many songs you got depending on what was on the counter you told them the song list that you wanted to hear they wrote it down and then they started playing your music and so basically after the unit uh, you, they done played all your music they could hit a switch and turn the unit off and it wouldn't work again until you put money in it and so basically um, they knew that your, their music was playing because they could hear the feedback through the microphone so uh, they knew that uh, you know they're, if they were starting a song they could actually monitor and listen to whether you were getting your music or not so uh, it was just a really cool ideal this is a art decoish looking uh, unit uh, and it's just a really cool unit and like I said we had to go through this to get this unit to fire uh, we had some problems with the relays, we had to go through them, and then also we uh, had to go through the contacts. Now, through the years, the contacts got bent out of shape, and, 
you know, I, I'm sure people probably got into it and tried to figure it out, and, and so they were just all out of whack and had to be readjusted, and the relays had to be gone through. And then I kind of had to back design it a little bit so I could uh, figure out how they were working the unit and uh, kind of go through that. The microphone, I believe, is bad. I don't get any impedance reading on this microphone whatsoever. So at this point, the only thing that I see that's not working on this unit is the microphone. And I'd like to have another microphone, although I don't know where you'd ever get any of the spare parts for this because uh, it's a very unique looking microphone and you probably would be better off going with some kind of a T1 out of an old 500 set or 2500 set, a microphone like this. And so anyway, um, basically, uh, Greg has a, a project that he's trying to create where he creates a back end to this, and he's got another unit, and he's looking into getting some more, and he wanted to create a back end unit where they could basically use this as an intercom or play music through it or, or you know, so he's got quite a, a, a project uh, planned for this. So this is kind of just kind of showing you what's going on. This is the initial checkout. Here's the coin box, and uh, here's your play wheel with all your songs. This is a side bracket where uh, your lock goes into uh, the side of the unit. And then we have some corner pieces. Uh, what's really cool about this is they must have had a machine shop set up where they were building these and building pinball machines but the glass in these corners are really thick and you can actually see how they chip the glass out and then they have this uh, colored glass cut stone rock uh, or glass and the light is supposed to shine through that so it's pretty cool and I'll show you something this just goes to show you that even back in the old days people would vandalize these units because what I found here when I took this corner glass is I found some old pieces of broken glass in here and I want to pull them out. I'm going to put them back in there because I think that's just a cool part of, uh, of the past. So somebody actually broke this glass and then they had to repair it because there is another piece of glass. I'm going to put it back in because I want it to stay with the unit. It's just kind of unique. And this is the corner to it, and the glass has been protected. Now, the best I can tell, the glass was supposed to be kind of, they wanted to frost it. It kind of looks like that, because this piece is kind of frosted looking. And uh, they didn't really want you to look in and see the bulb. They just wanted you to see the light. But uh, anyway, it's just a really cool piece of equipment. You're not going to see these. There's not a lot of information floating around. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put a nickel into it and I'm going to start it up. And this is all kind of loose, so... And then you... I just wanted to let the folks know that it's a... Uh, and then what would happen after the record would play... Have a lot of his... Is she would cut it off and then you wouldn't get anything. So, anyway... This gives you a little look at it and some of the pieces and parts in the playlist that go along with this unit. And we're going to do some more videos of this because it's just a really unique situation and um, you, you know it, it just deserves to have a lot more uh, videos done of it and we're just going to uh, try to put it all back together again. I'm going to make a little wiring harness where I can uh, put it all back together again and you won't see all these wires hanging out everywhere. But we're kind of in, in the middle of a process here on the initial checkout and figuring out how they uh, wired everything and, and what they were doing exactly to make this unit work. And so uh, we're going to do another nickel here. I'm going to go ahead and set the video down. Now, I don't know if they're playing music right now, but we'll see what happens. Here in St. Louis. Yeah. Little did I know that, that so many people like country music. Growing up in the city myself, 
I thought everybody liked the Dells and, and Jimmy Reed, <laughs> but I didn't know that just as there's even more people uh, would, uh, you know. So basically when uh, your songs were done, she would just cut you off and that was it until you put more money in it. So this is Greg's equipment from New York. It's a Shivers Multiphone and it's just a really cool item. And, uh, it's just great to be able to work on this and, and look it over and see what they designed here. It's just a really cool situation. And uh, we'll do some more video of this as soon as we can. This is Dennis with A1 Telephone Service and Repair, A1 Electronics. You can reach us on the web at www.a1-telephone.com. And you can also reach us at 618 two three five six nine five nine thank you for watching and have a great day